Shahrukh was uh, my senior okay. and um, I uh, did not meet Shahrukh in film school. I met him uh, outside because actually my friend was Gauri. In India, um, it's a, I mean the most powerful medium is mainstream cinema. Oh, mainstream cinema saved my life. And I thought, you know, trust me, I thought that this is the way my end has been written. It's much later that we sort of uh, decided on, on Salman because you must remember Ikta Tiger is Salman's first film with Yash Raj. Today I'm with director Kabir Khan, but we're not just going to talk about Kabir Khan, the director. We're going to talk to him about a lot more. Hi Kabir, welcome to The Quint. Hi, thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining me over coffee and chai. Before we start from the beginning, tell me, are you right now leading the dream life? Did you ever think this is what your life would look like someday? Um, yeah, I, to be honest, yes, I think I would say I'm, I'm living my dream life. One should never lose focus of what one, uh, you know, what the initial dream was. Uh, and my dream really, being from Delhi, I was a documentary filmmaker, my dream was really that um, I want to make that one film, you know. One film before I, my career comes to an end, I want one feature film where my name should come on the big screen. And so then everything after that is a bonus, yeah. right? Uh, touch wood, I've had a great career. I've, uh, and when I say great career, I don't mean in terms of, you know, commercial successes and money and all that. Uh, I say my career has been great because till date, and it's been more than 15 years since I've been making features, I've, I'm still being able to tell the stories that I want to. So yeah, I would say I'm definitely living my dream life. I hope this continues always for you. Thank you. But now can we start right from the beginning? And you were a student at Jamia, right? right? So can you tell us something about Kabir Khan, the student? I was never a very serious student. I would uh, study for, you know, what you call subsistence level. Uh, and then no more. But when I joined filmmaking as masters, I saw myself, I mean, I, I, I realized I was not studying anymore. I just got so um, consumed by trying to acquire more and more knowledge that it was no longer a chore. It was no longer like I have to study. It was just something that you wanted to do. So uh, consuming because you would finish maybe your film and then you would stay back at night because you were asked to act in somebody else's film and then you would shoot through the night and then you know maybe get one hour nap somewhere in the college itself and go back into class and there's so many of my uh, you know batch mates and and uh, mcrc uh, alumni in the industry that whenever we meet we, we, just, we just can't help but you know talk about those days again and again who, who are some of them oh there's so many uh, the dop who shot my first film anshuman male he's from mcrc and of course shahrukh khan is from mcrc so there's so many you know the editors the uh, dops the actors so tell, tell me something did you have like a fr like were you and shahrukh friends in college shahrukh was uh, my senior okay. and um, i uh, did not meet shahrukh in film school i met him uh, outside because actually my friend was gauri I used to be in modern school Barakamba and Gauri was in modern school Vasant Vihar and there was this one show uh, of the West Side Story that was uh, being put together for X modern nights and uh, Gauri and I were in, in, in the jets, uh, sorry in the sharks and, and that's how we became close friends and Shahrukh would come and visit Gauri because they were seeing each other at that point in time. So that's how I, I started uh, you know getting to know Shahrukh and then of course he was my senior in MCRC and he actually even gave me his notes uh, to study with. So right after out of college you started making documentaries is that right? So how was that? It Was that something that you wanted to start off with? Was documentary always your first choice? Well, I mean, to begin with, in those days, we were being trained as documentary filmmakers. I remember there was this documentary filmmaker who came uh, to, as one of the visiting lecturers in MCRC and he was sh showing us a film that he had uh, shot in Cambodia and uh, I was seeing that and I remember in the question answer he said that, you know, I was fascinated with travel always and he said that, uh, you know, you want to travel, become a documentary filmmaker and I said, wow, that seems to be a good life. And uh, so when I left MCRC, um, I went and uh, joined uh, a journalist at that point in time uh, called Saeed Nakui, uh, who at, he was obsessed with, you know, reporting on international affairs with an Indian perspective uh, instead of CNN and BBC. In those days, our, our channels didn't travel. Today, all our channels also yeah. travel and report from all over the world. In those days, they didn't. So I just went to Saeed Nakhwi and I joined him because I knew that he travels all over the world reporting you know on uh, uh, news features for with an Indian perspective and that's how my travel uh, began in in about four five years with him 
we did about 60 70 countries uh, you know i would i would just not i would never be in india i would i was always traveling and and that really are my defining years because that shaped me as an individual you know that amount of travel and exposure uh, is what in a certain sense made me what I am today. Yeah. Yes, and since then, you know, travel is something that has never stopped. I've, you know, now traveled to maybe more than 80 countries uh, and, and the goal is to hit century. So, I think COVID must have really put you in a bad spot, no, no travel. It was, it was really, and you know, um, one of my, um, what I really enjoy even today, uh, my, my, like my friends and my family know that if, if I really want to just chill and have fun, for me, it's taking my still camera and a couple of lenses and just walking the streets of some city in the world and just doing street photography. I love it. Can we talk a little bit about the, the difference between mainstream filmmaking and documentary? What was the stark difference that you found? We know there are many. I mean, the principal difference being that in documentaries, you cannot control anything. You go with a sort of rough idea. You go with a lot of research, of course, because you can't just land up there without knowing what you're doing. Um, but at the end of the day, it has to happen. Uh, in front of the camera without you controlling it versus a, a, a mainstream feature film where you're literally coming with an invading army and you want to control everything like if you could you could even stop the sun and say brother just wait a minute for my shot uh, filmmaking then and my filmmaking even today I'm, I must say is very um, instinctive I don't over intellectualize it uh, and I think that's why I, I did take to it easily though I must say uh, till my third, fourth film, maybe even till today, I can never get over because I come from a documentary background where it's literally me, my camera and, and you know, one more, my sound yeah. recordist and maybe a third person. I sometimes sit with my, you know, my friend and my executive producer of all my films, Rajan Kapoor. Also, he and I did documentaries uh, together. We were together in Afghanistan. I often sit with him on set and say, you know, try and explain to me why do we need so many people? And we have this game that goes on where sometimes in between shots I sit and say, okay, that guy, tell me that guy. Like if he wasn't on set, you know, would we not be able to make this film? And then he, he like Rajan will find out who he is and say, you know, he's so and so, so and so from this department. If he's not here, this will not happen. Was mainstream filmmaking always on your agenda or did it just happen to you? I'll tell you what made me move towards uh, uh, mainstream cinema. It's the lack of uh, reach that documentaries had when I was doing them. Um, and not too many people were watching it. I was not interacting with my audience. And that is for any communicator is a very, um, is frustrating. And I realized in India, um, it's, a, I mean, the most powerful medium is mainstream cinema. So I said, you know, I'm very clear that now, if I want to tell a story, it should be in mainstream cinema. And this is a very in interesting incident uh, that happened with me in, in Afghanistan, which made me realize the power of mainstream cinema. Uh, and in a certain sense, it, how mainstream cinema saved my life. Um, we were, you know, Rajan and I, as mentioned, my friend, we were together and we were trying to go, just, this is just post 9-11 and we were trying to go into Afghanistan because we were planning this documentary on the, you know, the fall of the Taliban and, you know, the emergence of this country from the shadows of, of uh, five years of Taliban rule. And uh, we could not take the usual route that is, you know, through Peshawar and through Pakistan because we, as Indians, we would never get the, that visa. So we were in, we had flown to Uzbekistan, from there we'd driven to Tajikistan and then we were trying from the north to enter Afghanistan. And everything, this was uh, end November, winter had set in, everything we tried uh, was, was just not working, you know. And then finally, you know, on, our, on one day we said, okay, we'll give it one last shot and then after this we'll go back to uh, Delhi. That's why we used to live that in those days. And uh, there was this one Russian military helicopter um, that was taking medical supplies to Kabul. And we went there and we took the, the, the pilot aside and, and we actually bribed him with some money and said, can you take us to, you know, uh, Kabul, just hide us in your cargo. And he readily agreed because the Russian economy wasn't as good as it was in, in those days. And, uh, and that's it. And we, the, the, the helicopter took off. And then suddenly he brought us down in the middle of nowhere uh, and said, you know, you'll have to jump off because uh, I can't take you, 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 you know, you're civilians and I can't take land at the airport. So you'll have to jump off here. And he was hovering above the ground, like 15 feet, 20 feet above the ground. And we said, but where, where is Kabul? And he said, please move. So we literally sort of hung off the rails of the uh, uh, helicopter and jumped off. And this chopper takes off and 360 degrees, there are only these snow-capped mountains. And we don't know where Kabul is and we're alone. And then we see this one character coming 
you know, charging towards us angrily, this big Mujahideen, I mean, six feet two, six feet three, with his flowing beard. And he came sort of uh, cocking the uh, gun towards us and he was saying something really angrily. And I thought, you know, trust me, I thought that this is the way my end has been written and it's going to be, we, nobody's going to even know what happened with us yeah. because we're in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. And nobody knows you took that helicopter. Uh, and he came to us. The only thing I knew was the Mujahideen had a certain warmth towards Indians at that point in time because we had helped them in their fight against the Taliban. And we just kept saying Hindustan, Hindustan and uh, he suddenly, he heard that and he stopped and he started singing a song from a wow. Hindi uh, film and I said, and that day I realized the power of mainstream cinema because it literally saved my life. And I think that was the day I said, okay, you know, from now on, if I have to tell a story, it has to be in, in mainstream cinema. And that's how my transition towards mainstream cinema happened. Oh, you really got me there for a minute. I said, <laughs> what, what more would have happened there? Salman and you have done three films together. Right. So when you're writing these films, when you were writing these films in particular, was Salman always your first choice? So, um, not too many people know, but, but Ekta Tiger actually initially was, uh, we not, we had not zeroed in on the on the on the star. It's much later that we sort of uh, decided on on Salman because you must remember, Ekta Tiger is Salman's first film with Yash Raj. Yeah. He had never worked with Yash Raj. Uh, when I was, uh, it's a very interesting story actually. I should mention it. Uh, when I was uh, moving around with my script, my Kabul Express script, uh, one of my friends, uh, Apurva, he uh, said he used to work with uh, closely with Salman in you know events and stuff. And he one day said, he says, uh, do you want to meet Bhai? I said, who doesn't want to meet Bhai? So we go there, he takes me to a, a set where Salman was shooting an ad and he uh, introduced me, he said, this is Kabir, he's a documentary filmmaker and you know, he's trying to make a film. I used to always carry a CD, a DVD with me of, you know, my images and uh, shots from my documentaries in, in Afghanistan because I didn't want people to think this guy's talking through his hat. You know, I wanted them to show that I've been here, I know this place, I know these people. So then he said, show me and I went to his van and he, uh, I showed him that DVD and again started discussing the idea and he says, you know, I'll play that character. And I thought it was all fun and games, right? It's all, he's joking. So we had a good time and, you know, we had a cup of coffee and we left. And then, uh, I guess two years later, uh, I'm now making uh, New York and I've not met him then after that, right? Okay. And I'm, I'm making New York and Adi says, I think, you know, the perfect ca casting for your character Maya is uh, Katrina. And I said, okay. Uh, I said, I don't know. I've never met Katrina. I don't know whether she would want to do a film like this, you know, because at that time Katrina was this diva who was great in the song and dance and love stories. I said, but I don't mind uh, narrating this. And uh, she came and that was her first time, first film that she was going to do with Yashraj. And I narrated the story to her and uh, I think Katrina was a little taken aback by the kind of story it was. And she went back and this is something she told me later. And she said, I went back and uh, uh, Salman asked her, so what happened with the meeting at Yashar? She said, you know, I met this new filmmaker, he's made this one film called Kabul Express. And uh, he said, oh, he said, and uh, he's making this film called New York. And uh, um, I'm not quite sure. And he said, this is the Kabir, right? The guy who, and she said, yeah. And he said, Aang band kar ke picture sign kar lo. Wow. So that's how I started meeting him. And then New York happened and the New York uh, became very successful. And then I started meeting him and um, he, he was always very warm uh, with me and always very friendly with me and then that's how we started thinking why don't we just take this to, to Salman, you know, Salman as Tiger would be fabulous and that's how it started. Okay, we've spoken about all your films in the past, now can we talk about 83? That got a euphoric response from everyone. Of course, we're a country that worships cricket, right? So were you expecting this sort of an overwhelming response from, for the film? You're absolutely right. The kind of love uh, and uh, appreciation that uh, I've got, like, like Ranveer and I have got for 83 is uh, way beyond all my films. I would say all my films put together. You know, you get these messages say great film and had a lot of fun and really enjoyable, really entertaining. But with 83, it was something different. With 83, the, the it was an, people were very emotionally, they were getting moved incredibly emotionally and the kind of messages I was getting were like, there was, a, there was like two page kathase. So to answer your question, there's no way we expected yeah. what how it came. But yeah, it's been really overwhelming. That's a lot of love yeah, and that's yeah. great. It is, it is unbelievable. It is really unbelievable. Are we going to see you make more films around sports? I would love to, you know, if somebody can make a career out of making love stories, 
I can get so many stories as a sports backdrop. So there are a couple of ideas I'm working on. They do have a backdrop for sports uh, and I'm getting drawn to them. Nice. So maybe that's next for you? I can't say. I'm, I'm right now actually working on two scripts. I don't know exactly which one will become my next because, you know, every film has its own destiny. But uh, yeah, one of the scripts that I'm working on definitely um, has a sports backdrop also. Thank you so much, Kabir. It was Thank such you. a pleasure chatting with you and Thanks I hope I see you soon.